نهار نهار نعمل نملك الخيار وخيار الأمل وتهدينا الحياة أضواء في آخر النفق تدعونا كي ننسى ألما عشنا نستسلم لكن لا ما دمنا أحياء نرزق ما دام الأمل طريقا فسنحيا Yes. Great, recording now. Hello and welcome to uh, this week's podcast. Um, pleased to have here a wonderful uh, poet, uh, writer, and performer, uh, Farah Shamma, whom I've had the pleasure to know for a while now. Um, she's been a rising star. Well, not rising, she's a star already. She's reached the sky already. Um, and uh, I've had the pleasure of working with her many times before. So I'm really, really pleased to uh, talk to her today and chat a little bit about her work and her latest performances in Gaza, in Bethlehem, in Jerusalem, and Tel Rabia, uh, previously known as Tel Aviv. And um, just wanted to really kind of get to know more about what make Farah as the artist. So I'm going to dive in straight with a question and ask you, Farah, the first question. Can you give me like a piece of art or something that has influenced your work, a, a song or a film or a performance that you've seen that really has shaped your work? Mm. Um, I have a friend in um, Lebanon uh, called Lama. She's in uh, Elba'a. And um, I, when I used to go visit her, so uh, in Beirut, I used to go from, um, um, from Palestine to, to Beirut quite often, and uh, usually by car. Uh, I used to sit with her and we'd listen to Ahd uh, al-Azdiqa. Uh, it's a song I love and I always love. Uh, it used to be on Space Tune. Uh, so the, the Syrian cartoon uh, channel that uh, we love very much. So Ahd al Asdiqa. So we used to listen to that quite a lot. And whenever I listen to it today, I, I still just think of Lebanon, uh, think of Lama. And yeah, and we used to be much younger. And she grew up to be a oud player and a percussionist. And um, it was very nice to talk to her recently and she was telling me that she wants to put together a space tune um show like just all the songs uh, reenacted um is Rasha Rizik, the one that sings all these songs right and her voice is always uh it's, it's the childhood mm -hmm. it's the feeling of uh, warmth and i always remember watching these these cartoons and loving the song so much uh, like it, it's um, it's about me or something. Uh, <laughs> so you're yeah. saying that your work is about you and your friends mostly? Is that why the song has shaped your work? Not really. I think it's uh, <laughs> because, do you know the song? I am trying to remember it. Not really. No. Can you hum it? Yeah, yeah it's... Um, or wait, sing it I, even better. Yeah, yeah even better because mm. I have a mic. Hulmuna um, nahar, naharu na'amal. نملك الخيار وخيارنا الأمل وتهدينا الحياة أضواء في آخر النفق تدعونا كي ننسى ألما عشنا نستسلم لكن لا ما دمنا أحياء نرزق ما دام الأمل طريقا فسنحيا and then every time it plays I'm like damn it's so nice and on one surreal night in Edinburgh, I, it was surreal. It was really cold. And I had a little rip in my pants at the back. <laughs> and, and of course, I drank so much scotch as usual. We have to when you're in Edinburgh. So much. And it was delicious. We went tasting, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. As I was clumsy. I, was, I moved a lot. I, my pants ripped like completely. So... <laughs> So Tizi cannot be share and it was so cold. <laughs> and we were walking back home, you know, um, very, very scotched up. And um, we went 
through it, like some kind of a tunnel, pedestrian tunnel. And I saw Madame Al Amal Tariqan Fasanahia written on the wall. No it way. Was so emotional. It was fantastic in Edinburgh with my butt in the cold. <laughs> and I'm like, see, there's Amal. There is Amal. This is synchronicity. So it's not really because it's about me. It's could, a, it's could it be the Scotch that actually made you see it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, maybe, but I don't think. I mean, maybe it was the cold actually <laughs> more than the Scotch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, that I was really cold, and and I saw that, and I started singing the song, mm-hmm. um, and it was written in Arabic. Uh, as well, like in Arabic letters, not mm-hmm. transliterated. Um, yeah, and I think it's like with the these song things. always comes back. You know, it's not about it being about. I mean, it's about amal and you know doing it despite trouble. I mean, it can be about anyone. Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, but it's the synergy, right? It comes back. It's the mm-hmm. song that always mm-hmm. comes back. And there are certain example. things in childhood that that come back um, somehow strangely and I only yesterday actually I was um, remembering a situation where I think I was a child in Gaza my mum was out of the house somehow somewhere um, and the house was empty it was a cold October day uh, and I remember just waiting outside for my mum for her to come back and it felt like eternity and I don't know why I remember that. It was there was nothing for like it's just suddenly that flash of memory came in. But um, yeah, stuff from childhood memories are always there. They always come out somewhere, whether it's after drinking so many scotch with your pants ripped in Scotland or not, <laughs> they somehow come out, you know. Um, but if we want to also know more about those those things within your personality, Farah, what about a place, a special place? that really kind of so important to you in your heart you've performed all over the world you've been all over palestine and other places um but what is the place that really kind of you always want to go back to and if you're not there you feel i don't want to say homesick homesick because what is home in the end but kind Mm. of feel reminiscent and some sort of nostalgia to it um there is a place in in Nablus that I always feel I want to be in, even though I, when I was there, I was very, very small. I was very young. It was my mom who took me to her aunt's house. Um, uh, uh, and uh, Imrasan had, uh, she always played music and she had a lot of plants by the window. And, um, and the way my mom, my mom loved going there so much. Uh, it was, it was so, I think that's why I was happy. No, I don't think I had taste for, you know, the details back then. I was just happy to be there as a mm. child. But I think because my mom is so happy and my mom would talk about it a lot. I th- grew up thinking, oh, I also like the music and the plants, even though I don't, re- mm-hmm. don't know if I really did, but yeah. I don't know, I was maybe four or five or something like that. Mm. But yeah, but she to uh, um, she listens to a lot of music. I, I think there were vinyls. Um, she had like a vinyl player. Um, and she would listen to um, uh, Fayrouz, Sabah uh, Fakhri, mm-hmm. uh, And yeah, and very faint memory, but it always comes back as well. These are, yeah, you know, the, yeah. when you talk about flashes, I think this is what what I feel connected to. These flashes that never leave me, that mm. feel like they come from the outside in rather than the, like an intentional memory. It feels like, nope, it just comes back and it's not very clear. But yeah, I think that's where I want to be or I want to go to again. I don't know what became of the the place. I know Imrasan passed away, uh, I don't know when but 2010 maybe mm. yeah Imrasan is a very unique name isn't it and uh, a name that also appears in a lot of um mm-hmm. literature and you know palestinian literature and novels and you know Hassan Kanafani had a character called Imrasan in it uh, mm-hmm. and many other writers as well but Imrasan yeah. house in Nablus 
gives that image, which I've never seen, of course, um, but it, it gives a sort of certain romantic image somehow, doesn't it? You know, did I you think get that? I mean, I think it's because my mom talks about it uh, yeah. also romantically in a way, or because it's, 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 it's so long ago, um, I only went, um, I don't remember how many times I, I used to go. I, it's a very vague memory. Um, yeah. And I think that's why we tend to romanticize vague memories. Um, mm. I mean, I saw Imre San again in Jordan. I saw her when I was a bit older. And, um, and I don't think I can link it to the same person in a way. It's, mm -hmm. I was much younger. Um, but yeah, but Imre San is, is not a fictional character. She has a, her oldest son is called Rassan. And then she yeah, has yeah. Shuran, Safwan. Uh, so the rhyming names, Juman, like. the, the girls, Kulham rhyming. Wait, 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 say it again. So Rassan, he, Safwan. He's Safwan, Ushuran. Shuran. Uh, Urassan, Hadol al Shabab. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have Juman. Juman, yeah. Uh, and I like this. Like, yeah. Hassan, بعدين, Hassan ibn Wahad Minhum. Yani, uh -huh. Kamalu, Kamalu was in Faal, Kamalu, Bnail, Hassan, Shura, Kamalu, Al An, Al Kafi. That means you had to break it. We are Mala Faul, Yani, Hassan. Ah, ah, but Zabit. Ah, but I let Emmy Nassil Ishi. So, Em Hussam, so I let so Em Emmy City. Hala Fi Saharu Tagreed. And he is Sahar Immi, my mom mm -hmm. is called Sahar, my aunt's called Tagreed. But then the other five, they all rhyme. Mm -hmm. uh, Azam, Hussam, Siham, Wissam, Hiyam. Five. I like it. Yeah. I like it. Hello. <laughs> Tayyib, talking about people, I think my final question to you is apart from me, of course, who is the <laughs> special person who has influenced you so much and influenced your writing, your work? um and 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 you feel like they've had a huge contribution to to your work um it's uh, definitely i mean it is quite a sad story in a way but it's been five years so i think i was able to mold it and make it into a beautiful uh story uh it was it's the most difficult story of my life so far um it's my friend hani uh who passed away uh and uh he, he was a dear friend, so when I moved to the Emirates to work, I met him here and uh, uh, we used to sit in the car and drink shai karak, which is a very uh, Emirati Indian thing to do. Uh, and uh, we'd listen to music and he introduced me to a lot of underground Arab music. So much of it, right? Therese Sleiman, even Ruba Shamshum, he introduced me to. I didn't know Therese or Ruba. Al-Murabba, uh, Al-Farri, all these people was, was him. It's his playlist. But he also really loved Radiohead um, and, um, and uh, listened to a lot of Nina Simone and um, jazz like Ella mm, Fitzgerald. Mm. And so, on. so he had a very beautiful music taste. Uh, he was quite sad because his mother had passed away uh, like a year before, I think, or a year and a half before I had met him. And we would spend a lot of time together, mainly in the car, listening to music. And he's not much of a talker. Uh, so we would just sit there and barely speak, just mainly listen to things or watch things on, on a phone and just drive around Sharjah and Dubai. And, um, and yeah, and uh, he, um, so basically we spent, I left to Paris for a year. I lived in Paris for a year. We stayed in touch, we were very close, and I came back and, um, uh, and spent a couple of days with him. And on the night of his passing, uh, I was with him. Um, <clears throat> and we went to Irish Village in, in Dubai and we had a couple of drinks. So it was our first drinks together because I didn't used to drink before mm. Paris. <laughs> Uh, so we had our first couple of drinks and, um, he, it was a very heartfelt evening because he was opening up and, and talking more and it was very emotional and so on. And, uh, and yeah, and, and it actually translated into a physical love 
the, the, the night was, became physical. It became, we held each other, we kissed each other in the car and we, it got a bit more intimate, but it was also very, very emotional, less like, um, it was more cuddle intimate than, you know, um, sexual in the, mm-hmm. in the more passionate uh, intercourse sense. Um, and uh, yeah, and I cried and I started kissing his forehead. So it was a very, very emotional night. And he dropped me back home and, um, and he had a car accident on his way back. Uh, so it was very, very tough for me to handle that. Uh, but he used to always tell me things like, uh, because I used to travel. I started this very artistic career and he was so happy. And I met Al Fari and had a show with him in London before. So during Hani's uh, time around. And he was so happy. And he's like, you're going to meet all these people that I introduced you to. And it really started happening. I met Therese Sleiman. Um, I met Ruba Shamshoum. I went to a Radiohead concert in Portugal. <laughs> and I feel like I live a lot of things through him or for him. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. always happening. And it's really beautiful how he always comes back. Uh, and I always go like, oh my God, Hani introduced me to this. Mm-hmm. Of course I'm going to meet it. Of course I'm going to talk to this person that Hani told me about. Um, he even introduced me to a lot of rappers whom I met in Beirut. Like, it's really beautiful to see, to connect the dots. And it became like a game to me, like a very nice, fun game for me to play. Like, oh, what's going to happen next that I can connect to something that is painful? And how can I um, celebrate Hani yeah, in my own yeah. little world, you know? Because he loved life, but he was very, very sad because of his mom's passing and he really wanted to go see her and he did you know and that's what he said on the night he's like and i'm like and i'm like you know i was uh, and he yeah. went i went so i was very mad that he actually did go and i mean mm. you know i mean if we're speaking metaphorically like he wanted to go meant he wanted to die yeah 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 yeah, uh, yeah. so the story is has always been there, shaped me a lot, shaped my writing a lot, uh, shaped how I feel like about the world, about death a lot, um, but also taught me about love and the body and holding someone. And we were naked. We were holding each other naked in the car, you know, in Dubai. Who does that? Who the fuck does that? We were crazy. We were, mm-hmm. it's insane. I would never do that. It was a very mm-hmm. special night mm-hmm. with a lot of, lot of uh, details like juicy, you know, juicy details, like a lot of, it's such a piece of literature to me. It's mm. unbelievable. Uh, and of course it became that the more I thought of it, the more I reflected, the more I felt pain and so on. So definitely Hani, like I would, and I tattooed his name on my um, arm as well. So he's, um, he's very important in my life. Absolutely. Mm. This story is very important. Yeah. Well, I think he sounds like an amazing guy, really. I think uh, people like this are very difficult to, to forget, very incredibly hard to forget. I think you will see them in everything, as you said, everything you do, everything you listen to. And even if he didn't introduce you to something, somehow he's opened the door for you to, to, to know yeah, these things. So I think absolutely. that he sounds like an amazing guy. And it's a touching story, Farah. Um, and I think, yeah, hopefully you can write more about it and about him and we get to know him as well through your words and through your eyes um, as well. Um, Farah, thank you so much for today. I think uh, it's been a pleasure having you on the program. Um, I, I look forward to your next work and uh, your next poem and your next words. You write so beautifully and I'm a big fan, I have to say. Um, yeah, so come back again to this program anytime, please. I will. Thank you, <laughs> Ahmed. Um, thank you, everybody, for listening. You've been listening to the Pal Art Collective, sponsored by the U.S. Federal Department to Fuck Israel. Thank you. <laughs> Nahar, 
تدعونا كي ننسى ألما عشنا نستسلم لكن لا ما دمنا أحياء نرزق ما دام الأمل طريقا فسنحيا